Hi, and welcome to this video that continues our series on Python optimizations. In particular, we're going to look at something called string interning. Now, we've seen interning before. We saw that in the last video, and we saw that Python automatically interns a certain range of integers. But some strings are also interned by Python, but not all. And that's really important to understand that not all strings are interned. Now, as the Python code is compiled, identifiers are interned. Now, what are identifiers? They're things like variable names, function names, class names, you know, and, and anything else that you use inside your code. Your code is essentially a lot of strings, right? And it gets compiled by Python and it will in turn all these identifiers. Now, just as a reminder, identifiers must start with an underscore or a letter, and then they can only contain underscores, letters, and numbers. So some string literals also get automatically interned. Again, not all, but some. In general, any string that looks like an identifier will get interned. So the string, hello world, well, that satisfies the rules for an identifier, and that will get interned. Now, even though it may start with a digit, so that technically it's not an identifier, those strings will still get interned as long as everything else looks like an identifier. But don't count on it, right? You, you shouldn't count on things getting interned. Python is interning those things for a reason. So why? Why is Python doing that? Well, it's all about optimization. And it's really about speed optimization and possibly memory optimization. If you think about what's happening as your Python code is running, Python needs to look up your, you know, your identifiers, your variable names. If you reference a variable and you say print A, well, it needs to go and look up A. So it goes into a dictionary essentially and says, hey, you know, where's A? Find A and tell me what it is and then I can find the object and do whatever, you know, whatever needs to happen with it. So there's a lot of, you know, string comparisons that have to occur, right? A lot of string equality testing. So let's say, let's, let's look at two strings. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have some long string, okay? So A equals some long string and B is the same value, some long string. Well, if we use A equals equals B, if we use equality comparison to compare the two strings, we have to do this character by character. However, if we know that some long string has been interned, then we know that A and B are both going to point to the same memory address. In that case, to check whether A and B are the same strings, we can actually just check whether they have the same memory address or not, right? And so we can use the identity operator is instead of the equality operator, the double equal sign. So we can compare memory addresses, which is just comparing two integer values for equality, instead of comparing two long strings character by character. And this is much faster than doing the character by character comparison. And in fact, we'll take a look at that in the code that we'll look at a little later in the video. So not all strings are in turn by Python. You've got to be careful about that. But you can force strings to be in turn yourself. So there is a method, the intern method in the sys module that you can use to actually force interning of strings, basically making that particular string a singleton. So the way you would use it is you would first have to import the module, import sys, and then you would say a equals, and instead of just making it equal to the string, you would say sys.intern and then the string that you want. Now, when you create b, you have to also do sys.intern. You can't just make it equal to the string itself, otherwise that will be a new object in memory. So in this case, A is B will evaluate to true, and it's a much faster comparison than doing A equals equals B. So when should you do this? Well, in general, don't do it, right? Unless you have a specific need. Now, when does that happen? Well, for example, let's say you're dealing with a very large corpus of data right, a large number of strings that maybe has a high repetition. Maybe it's a, you know, you're trying to tokenize, um, you know, a big set of text. Maybe you're trying to tokenize, you know, Shakespeare's plays, for example, or whatever it is, you know, especially in things like natural language processing. Then you have a lot of strings that have a lot of repetition. 
So instead of creating a new object for each occurrence of the word the, for example, if you intern everything, then every string the is actually going to point to the same object in memory and you're going to reduce your memory overhead. So there might be a memory optimization here that you may want to use string interning for. Of course, it also is going to help up, you know, help speed up comparisons. Now, when you're trying to find or compare a string against another string, you know, if you know that both strings have been interned, you can use the is operator instead of the equals equals operator, which will be much faster. So if you've got lots of string comparisons going on, then it might make sense to do some string interning. But in general, unless you actually find that you need it, don't do it. Don't start, you know, interning strings right off the bat. Just do use strings normally. And then if you find that you need to speed things up or you need to reduce your memory footprint, depending on the circumstances you're working with, then start doing and looking at string interning. So don't optimize things until you need to actually optimize them. OK, so let's take a look at some code and see how all this works in practice. So let's take a look at string interning in practice. So we'll take two variables, a and b. And this will get interned because hello looks like an identifier. It's a short string for starters, but that doesn't really matter. As long as it looks like an identifier, it will get interned. So if we do that, we can see what the ID of a and b is. Okay, And as we can see, they're the same memory address. Now, on the other hand, if we take something like hello world with a space in it, okay, and then we do the same thing with b, then you'll notice when we print the ID of a and the ID of b, um, that we do not have the same memory address. Right? And that's because A and B do not look, or at least those strings, hello world, don't look like an identifier and they just don't get interned, at least not automatically. So don't count on string interning to happen. Now, why is that important? Well, because now I can do, I can certainly compare A equals equals B, okay, which is true. Now, A x B in this case is going to be false, right? Because hello world is not interned. So the ID of A, the ID of B is different. But if we take this example over here, let's paste it back in and let's do A equals equals B. As we can see, A equals equals B is true, which is as it should be. But A is B is also true because those two strings were interned. So we have, let's say, one more example that I want to show you. A equals this is a long string that could, oh no, no space, that's the thing, that could be used as an identifier. It doesn't even have to be spelled correctly. Okay, so this is what A is. Now I'm going to copy that. And I'll run that statement and then I'll paste it in and do B as well. Okay. And A is B is going to return true. So as you can see, even for a long string, as long as it looks like an identifier, it will get interned automatically. Why is that? Well, because you may very well be using an identifier in your code, right? And maybe it's in a string and later on you're going to try and find, let's say, a function whose name is whatever's in that string or a class whose name is in that string. So Python says, well, in case you're going to do that, I'm going to intern those two strings. Okay, so it does that automatically. Now, we don't have to rely on the automatic string interning all the time. We can actually force string interning. So we can do it in this way. We're going to import sys, okay, the sys module. And in order to do a string interning, we're going to have to say a sys dot intern and then whatever string we want. So in this case, I'll do this hello world that we've seen before doesn't get interned automatically. So let's do that. 
Let's do the same thing for B. Sys dot intern hello world. Okay. And then C I'm going to make to just hello world itself. And you're noticing I'm creating C after I've created A and B. So let's look at the ID of each of these variables. So the ID of A, ID of B, and ID of C. Okay. Now you'll notice that the ID of A and B are equal. And that is as expected because we have interned that string hello world in both cases. Now for this third one, we just set C equal to hello world. So Python doesn't try to intern the string, even though technically it could, because this is over here, but it doesn't even try. So remember, if you're going to intern your strings, you need to make sure that you intern every instance of that string, okay? Not just the one, you need to intern all of them, right? So now what this means is that if I know that A and B are intern strings, I can certainly test for equality between the two values, hello world and hello world, using the equality operator, the equals equals. But since those strings are interned, I also know that they are going to match if and only if their memory address matches as well, right? Because I've interned those strings. So instead, I can test A is B, which will also return true. Now, what is A is B testing? It is testing the equality of those two values over here, right? Which are two integer values. Very fast test. Okay, it's very fast to test the equality of two integers. This equality operator here, A equals equals B, on the other hand, is trying to compare this string and this string character by character. And if it runs out of characters and nothing's mismatched, then you have an equal string. So it takes longer to run that kind of comparison. In everyday code, you really don't need to worry about this. But if you are doing a lot of string comparisons, and by a lot, I mean a lot of string comparisons in your code, then you might want to consider string interning. Let's take a look actually at an example. We're just going to do a very kind of quick and dirty uh, benchmark on this. So let's do this. Let's say def compare using equals we'll take some parameter n that's going to be how many times we want to run this comparison okay and we are going to first create two strings that are not interned so a long string that is not interned and we'll do that times 200 so we've got a long string that is not interned repeated 200 times. That's really a long string that is not interned. Okay. And then B, we're going to make exactly the same thing. Oops. Okay. But we're going to change it and call it B. Okay. So now that we have that, we're going to write a loop. We're going to say for I in range N. So we're going to loop N times basically. And we're going to say if a equals equals b and we're not going to do anything, right? Just going to pass. So really all what we're going to do here, right? This function is going to create two strings and then it's going to run an equality operation between those two strings n times, whatever n happens to be. Okay. So that's that one. Now instead, what we're going to do here, we're going to say compare using interning and we'll again we'll pass it this parameter n the only difference is that i'm going to just copy all that code over the first two difference is that sys.intern we're going to use here okay so we're going to take the same string that we had before but we are going to intern it Okay, and then the other difference is that instead of using equals equals b, we can get the same result by using the identity operator is because we know that the two strings are interned, right? So we're just going to check their memory address. Okay, so this is obviously, you know, I mean, you, in general, you're not always going to be comparing the same string. You're going to want to be comparing different strings and then see when you get equality. 
um, but in this case what I'm really interested in is the speed difference between the equality operator and the identity operator. So we're going to run this, right? Now we're going to have to run this a certain number of times and then we're going to time it. So we're going to import time, we've seen this before, and then we're going to set start equals time dot perf counter, which is basically a number of milliseconds, then compare using equals and we're going to run this. Now let me see exactly how many. I've, I kind of ran this before. And I want a number that's big enough that we'll see a difference. We'll see a, a, a substantial difference um, in the performance of each of those. So as you can see, I wish. So three, six. Okay, so 10 million times. So we're going to run this comparison here, this A equals equals B, 10 million times, okay? And once it's finished running, we'll look at our time.perf counter. Um, and perf counter has an underscore, okay? Perf counter, and then we will print and minus start okay and maybe we'll even print this here saying this is for the equality okay all right so this is going to run basically that equality operator 10 million times this is only going to run once right not 10 million times just the equality operator so it's not like we're timing creating you know these two strings 10 million times and the same thing is going to happen here. The majority of the time is going to be taken by these two loops. Okay, so let's run it and let's see what it doesn't like. Compare using equals. Compare using equals. Well, I must have a typo, so I'm just going to... There we go. And now we can run it. That's going to take a little while. Okay, there we go. 3.939 seconds. Okay, that's how long it took to run. So now we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to copy paste, but I'm not going to use copy using equals. We're going to say copy using interning. Okay, so we're going to run it again 10 million times. We'll do a perf counter in the beginning, perf counter at the end, and then we'll take a look at the number of uh, seconds that have elapsed. And there you go, 0 0.38. So, and that's why I wanted a big number. I wanted to show you kind of a more drastic difference, right, between the two. But still, you can see that when you are doing large numbers of comparisons of strings, you're better off interning, right, and then doing this equality comparison. Now, of course, interning takes a certain amount of time, right? It takes a certain amount of effort to do the interning. So, if you're going to be loading let's say 10 million strings and comparing each string once well i don't know that you're going to gain much speed by doing interning right but if you're loading 10 million strings and you're going to do you know millions and hundreds of millions of you know uh, comparisons between those strings then yeah start considering interning right even if you're loading you know a thousand strings but you know you're going to do you know 5 10 15 million comparisons between those strings right then think about string interning but if all you're going to do is do a one-time comparison between two strings there's no point in interning then okay all right thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video